Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful Sunday here in uh, lovely Tennessee as you can see right here behind me which was not the case yesterday as I tried to go to the racetrack a uh, racetrack that was about two hours away and about an hour and a half into the drive uh, they canceled the race due to weather which the weather was clear the rest of the day. So it's pretty mad. I had to turn around and drive like an hour and a half back. I wasted like a half a tank of diesel uh, in like half my day uh, for nothing. So that's why there haven't been any, any uh, videos the past two weeks since the dino day because the weather around here has not been cooperating uh, and uh, we keep missing track days. So I wanted to make a quick video to give you guys some kind of content. Mod Nationals is coming up not this coming up weekend but the next weekend and maybe this weekend I might go to Bowling Green just to test the car before Mod Nationals. Uh, I called my buddy Jesse Gatiba. He's got a four valve car uh, that's been 860s. It's probably going to go faster, but me and him may run if I go. And then also my friend uh, Jake with the orange uh, two valve car will be there as well. We're going to try to work on the suspension. And, and uh, he just put Holly on his car, so we're going to try and get him into the eights. Um, but just wanted to do a quick video today. I had a couple of questions about uh, suspension setup on the Mustang, and I said that I would do a video, so I figured. Today would be a great day to do it. Um, the way I'm going to go about it is I'll show you guys what I have on my car and I'll explain the reason behind the parts that are on there and this will kind of go for any stock style suspension Mustang. Um, so we'll get under the car and talk about the stuff under there. Okay so I'm down here under the car and I'll just start from the back and start working my way forward. So the first thing right here is the uh, shocks. I run a Viking uh, double adjustable shock. Uh, the double adjustable means that you can adjust the compression and the rebound, basically the separation and the and the compression of the shock. You can uh, control those two independently with these two dials right here. That's important on a drag car, especially on a drag radial car that uh, especially on a drag radial car that has a lot of anti squat and we'll talk about that in a minute. But you can kind of adjust how the rear end reacts on the launch. Now, you don't absolutely need a double adjustable shock. I ran a strange single adjustable before these, which worked fine. But the only thing that the single adjustable <clears throat> could control was the rebound, um, which is which is decent. People have been plenty fast on it. But when you start talking about racing on marginal surfaces, you need the adjustability of a double adjustable. <clears throat> so moving on from there, I have uh, my lower control arms right here. Uh, these are Team Z. Uh, double adjustable right here double adjustable on the ends uh, control arms and you also see down there that there's no longer a polyurethane or a rubber bushing uh, it's a solid heim joint so this is a pretty important thing on a drag car because a polyurethane bushing or a rubber bushing is going to have what you would call deflection whenever you apply power to it and that's basically uh, power that's not making its way to the rear wheels so for a for drag racing uh, purposes, you want to go to a solid uh, heim joint uh, in all your joints on your uh, rear suspension. Alright, so you can kind of see the spring right here. So this is a Team Z uh, drag spring. It's uh, actually for a Fox body, but I knew that the rear of my car was going to be light after the weight reduction, so I went with the with the Fox body. So. Um, you don't absolutely need the Team Z drag springs. Uh, Team Z actually says that you can run a stock V8 spring and then cut it to the to get the de desired ride height. So for ride height, what you want to do is you want to get this lower control arm right here. You want to get it parallel with the ground or uphill just a little bit. You don't want it facing downhill because that messes up your instant center, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You want it parallel or uphill just a little bit as you look from the rear uh, connection point to the front point up there. So that's where you would cut, if you had a stock spring, you would cut that spring and get your ride height set to where this bottom control arm is the way I was just talking about. So that's uh, kind of where you want to go on, a, on the springs. All right. Now... As you can see right here, you see these link, this link hanging down. There's one on each side. As you can see, and those go to my anti-roll bar. The purpose of the anti-roll bar is to keep, if you ever watch a car that doesn't have an anti-roll bar, 
uh, on the launch what it'll do is it'll torque down use my hand right here it'll torque the right rear down the reason it does that is because it's pushing the left tire farther away from the body and it's basically the way that the torque comes from the from the engine to the rear end so you'll see the right rear of the car go down and squat down over the right rear tire it's not necessarily squatting the body is squatting over the tire uh, but the the left part of the car if you have positive anti-squat is actually it's just raising up from the left tire and twisting down over to the right so what this anti-roll bar here does is it makes the force it applies the force evenly to both tires so you get a you get an even launch and you'll see the front end come up even instead of it picking up the front left tire so that's the purpose of that uh, for anyone that's curious that brand that is the baseline suspension suspensions and uh, anti-roll bar I don't remember which which number they have like one two and three or something like that the different numbers but it's just the basic anti-roll bar as you can see the red part up here uh, those are my upper control arms and hold on just a second I'm gonna get out of the car and so we can get a better view of them alright so here's a better view of the upper control arms uh, these are the baseline uh, outlaw relocated upper control arms as you can see up here there are actually three different holes they're kinda hard to see but at that bolt right there that the uh, control arm connects to there's actually three different holes and that's so you can adjust your instant center position and you're going to be able to change your anti-squat values um, and we'll I'll talk about this a little bit more when I can show you guys a, 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 represent, a drawing of what I mean by instant center and anti-squat or squat so anyways as you can see the upper control arm also has a solid heim joint on both ends which is important so you get all the power transferred to the rear tires also you see these upper control arms are adjustable that's so I can adjust my pinion angle right here on the drive shaft alright guys so that's really all there is to the rear end of the car so I'll move on to the front end of the car and show you what I got going on, going on up there so up here at the front of the car I have a UPR Chrome Molly K member uh, the manual steering rack right here and then I'm running a strange single adjustable shock up front still it works pretty good basically you're like I said on with the when I had the rear rear single adjustable shocks basically your the knob there is has a setting of a uh, 1 to 10 and that controls your rebound of your shock now the rebound of your shock is uh, how hard it is to pull the shock apart so the tighter that is, the slower the front end is going to rise, which is pretty important whenever you're tuning uh, for track conditions. You know, whether you want more bite in the rear, you would have a, a tighter front setting, or if you want more weight transfer, you would have a lower or a looser front shock. Um, and it's just all about fine tuning and figuring out what works for your car and what works for the track conditions. But I generally run a setting of five up front whenever the track is marginal, um, like I run on a lot around here and then a setting of probably eight and eight would be a tighter setting than five uh, and the tighter setting I, I'd use like eight on a on a good track and then you can see right here this little chain deal that's hanging down right here with the uh, with the uh, quick release pin and the different holes for adjustment that's a uh, front end travel limiter I don't use those very often those are basically if you have uh, problems with doing uh with doing wheelies you would uh limit the front end travel but I generally don't have problems doing wheelies if it's a really good track I'll limit the travel a couple inches but like right now the car has all the front end travel uh, for marginal type tracks which I've been racing on lately now up here I have a UPR coilover kit that basically the sleeve side slides onto the shock and you have the spring up here I'm running a 14 by 150 spring so the 14 stands for how long the spring is It's a 14 inch spring and then the 150 uh, has to do with the spring rate so a higher number would be uh, a heavier spring if memory serves me correctly um, there's kind of some debate on what works for uh, a spring on the front so a lot of people say that the longer spring will store more energy 
uh, and it's supposed to help, you know, in a drag racing uh, situation. But if you actually read some articles uh, by Dave Zimmerman for, from Te Dave Zimmerman from Team Z, he actually recommends a 12-inch front spring. Uh, now, with the 12-inch front spring, you're going to not have as much uh, front-end travel, so you wouldn't have to limit it as much with these travel limiters here as I would with a 14-inch spring up here. Uh, that's a spring I bought years ago, and it works pretty decent, so I just I haven't really seen a need to, to change it yet. I may try, try a 12-inch spring in the future, but for right now, that spring's working fine. Um, that's really it for front suspension, so... Uh, now I want to show you guys, uh, kind of show you guys on the drawing of what I mean by instant center and anti-squat values. All right, guys. So let's talk about instant center and anti-squat real quick. And the best way to explain it is to to draw it. You guys, excuse my uh, drawing abilities. I'm not an artist. That's why I drag race. All right. So. First off, you want to think about we're looking at the car from the side of the car, right? From, let's say, we're looking at it from the passenger side of the car, right? So, you got your rear wheel right here, and your front tire right here. All right, rear wheel, rear, and front. Okay, and here's the road, All right? Sitting on the ground. Okay, so next we'll we'll kind of put the pickup point, or basically the rear of the lower control arm. So let's say it's right here. That's the rear of the lower control arm, the rear bolt, right? And then the lower control arm comes forward to where it mounts to the body of the car. That's the front pickup point of the lower control arm, right? Okay, so now let's go to the part of the upper control arm that connects to the rear end. So it's, let's just say it's right here, all right? And then it's coming forward, and it comes to the point to where it connects to the chassis or the body of the car, all right? So lower control arm, upper control arm. So when I'm talking about instant center, what I'm talking about is the point that where if you drew a straight line off of the lower control arm, so let's, this is an imaginary line right here, and you drew a straight line off the upper control arm. Once again, this is an imaginary line. Where these two points intersect is called your instant center. And this can move based off of the angle and length of your uh, upper and lower control arm and this will uh, basically control how the suspension works against the uh, weight of the car and how the car launches alright so we talked about instant center so let's just say in theory this is our instant center right here All right now let's talk about anti-squat so if you draw a line from the back tire straight up and this is going to change based off your center of gravity. So it could be, the front of this line could be lower down here or higher. But this is just for, uh, for explanation. For an explanation, we'll just draw the line like that. Okay, so we'll call this the anti-squat line. So if your instant center point is above anywhere in this area right here, anywhere above this line, you're going to have a positive anti-squat value anti-squat and it's going to be you know 100 percent and up if your instant center point is below this line you're going to have squat which is anything that's 99 percent and lower so if you have squat so if your instant center is below this line you have a certain percentage of squat and there's math and formulas to determine what your actual value is, but squat is bad for a drag car. So what happens when you have squat is whenever you let off the trans brake button, what's happening is, you know, people think, oh, it's cool, you know, that, that drag car, it just squatted over the rear tires. That's not a good thing, because what happens is, is not only 
does it look like the body is squatting over the tire but the suspension is actually pulling the tire up into the body so you're actually pulling weight that could be used to push this tire down into the track surface and you're pulling it up into the car so you're taking weight off this tire that's not a good thing not for traction so what you want is you want a positive anti-squat value and this is where your relocated upper control arms come into play and uh, give you that high anti-squat value because what they do is they shorten your instant center as you can see the shorter your instant center is farther above this line you can get with your instant center so a positive anti-squat value is going to press the tire into the ground away from the chassis whenever you let off the trans brake button so what this does is it aids in giving you better traction and also another benefit and we're getting kinda getting kinda into some deep stuff here but on your Mustang with a uh, with the shorter uh, upper control arm and longer lower control arm so it's it's not a parallel four link like your typical uh, drag car that's four linked where you have the same length lower and upper control arm so with the Mustang with the shorter upper control arm whenever you separate the rear end away from the body you're making your instant center longer and what that does is that leverages more of the front weight of the car onto the rear tire so this is why stock suspension Mustangs work so well is because of this suspension setup from the factory so that's really uh all I have on that hopefully this guy's helped you uh, this helped you guys understand uh, anti-squat squat and instant center hey so I hope you guys understood uh, my explanation of the anti-squat instant center and I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit from my suspension setup on my car in particular you can kinda of carry pretty much all that stuff onto any stock suspension Mustang um, if you guys have any questions uh, post them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer um, the little bit that I know about suspension setup I've learned offline a good website that I would recommend you guys to use to learn a little bit about Mustang suspension and all of that good stuff is BaselineSuspensions.com that's who I have my upper control arms from as well as my anti-roll bar I believe his name is Kevin he has a good write-up on launching a drag car I I'll place a link to Baseline Suspensions website down in the description below so you guys can uh, go check that stuff out um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was kind of short and sweet and to the point. I didn't want to drag it out too long. The suspension setup can get kind of complicated if you really want to dig into it, but it doesn't need to be that complicated. You kind of already have a path laid out in front of you with guys that have been doing this stuff for years with stock suspension Mustangs. Uh, it's all over the internet. You can go read Yellow Bullet, uh, all kinds of different places on stock suspension Mustang stuff. So I would highly recommend if you guys or really want to learn something you know go out there and do your research you know Google's a great search function I, I use Google all the time um, that's how I've learned everything that I have come to know now at this point so um, that's all I got for now if you guys like the video as always hit that like button if you're not subscribed to my channel subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later